Hello, tree update. April 29th, 2017. We started to last weekend. We were going to trench up. My husband had the backhoe and was ready to do this area and trench it up for the hazelnuts and service berries is mainly what's going to go through here, maybe some other stuff. But we realize we have cable, so we called Pops, the South Carolina service, to come out. The, the phone company came out the very next day. We're still waiting on the power company to come out. We're pretty sure it's here, but we also need the power company to, if we can get them to locate the lines behind our house that goes down to the greenhouse, because um, we're going to plant trees down there too. So planting of trees got put off. I did get some chestnut trees in. See the, um, that's one of the auntie trees. I got two trees from my mom last year. That's one of them. I planted that there. This was where half the chestnut tree that I split in half that was um, at a V at the very bottom. And the root ball went, it also split in half, the tap root. The other one's doing fine, but this one, it didn't survive. So I put that one more in the woods been watering it and soon I'll mulch over it real high. So this is one that I planted last year. wasn't doing too well. I need to come down in here and cut it. It's starting to get some stuff on the bottom. I, I do want one good solid trunk. It'll be a healthier and stronger tree that way. So I'll come and trim that off. But this is also from my mom's and it's two years old. And this is the other half of the one that I split. And it's four years old, and look, it's not, it just bushed out. So I need to come in here and clean it up too. And this chestnut's from our old property. It's a year old, and I was trying to pick some of the bigger ones here. It's southeast of the orchard, where I've got the apple trees and the pomegranates. And I'll mulch it over real well soon, too. I've been watering it almost daily if it didn't rain. And I hope to get some more chestnuts out there. So that puts four chestnuts. Let's see. One over there. And then one there. And one there. <laughs> um... So they're, they're in close proximity. Those two may be too close, but I think that'll be okay. Hopefully. Keep checking for signs of life on the, um, on the pomegranates, because the frost, I mean, they were coming out, they were alive, they survived the winter, and the frost hit. So nothing's coming out on this. Um, no budding, but... I'm pretty sure that's the pomegranate. So it's almost like starting from scratch. I spent extra buying, you know, something bigger, a uh, little older tree. And I may just be better off just going ahead and getting bare root from now on, just something that's a year old. The other one has no other signs. Here's a pink lady. Oh, goodness. Are we already getting... Stink bugs. They got. I'm gonna have to get something to spray this year. They got so bad last year. But I thought the tips had died. But see, they're budding. This one took the longest to leaf out, and it's already budding at the very tips, and it's coming all the way through. So I'm gonna come in here and and uh, do some cleaning up on these too. But all four of the apple trees survived. They're doing, they're doing good. And the, and the plum. Still hadn't gotten in here and cleaned this up. Uh, the figs and chestnuts I started from last year. Uh, the red buckets were the ones I got from my mom. And this one took a hit, but it may be okay. And then I got two nice big ones I want to go ahead and plant. I only had one in the woods survive out of the four I planted, so I, I definitely want to replace the three that didn't make it and find some other places. And I want to do the smaller ones because the cage, um, like this one, the cage is only two feet tall, so they won't, they won't fit in the cage. 
and I just want to give that a give them a chance to go a couple of years in a cage so that deers won't eat them down. Here's the hazelnuts. And they all have leafed out. They all seem to be doing okay. I plan on using the um, these buckets first instead of transplanting them to uh, individual containers. Um, instead of using these here and then transplanting those to individual containers, I'll just go ahead and use them first. This is the elderberry. There's some interesting research on elderberry that I've been learning. and um, the, Definitely know what you're getting into. There's a lot of stuff and a lot of information. Every plant has good and bad. And you need to be aware of uh, the bad aspects as well as the good ones. And definitely this one looks like it's... Um, it's done nothing and it's, it's dead probably. It's been five weeks so it should have leafed out by now. See this one's come out bushy. And again I'll probably uh, I'll use the multiples, the ones in, um, in containers together first. This is the red, mulber red mulberries and they all seem to be doing fine. Just kind of interesting. Hmm. See how the leaves are. And the black walnuts. And it's amazing that the ones in the multiple buck the in with other plants in the in the container are doing better than the ones um I pulled out the ones that look stronger, better root systems, better um bigger um stalks and put the weaker looking stuff here and now they're putting the other things to shame. I'm going to clean all that up with the base. The pecans are taking the longest. They're finally let's see, this five weeks and this one very, very little sign but definitely at the top, very top so it's taking five weeks for them, whereas, see the ones in the, uh, these were the weaker, smaller ones the, the, that I almost throw away. You know, I, I would, I almost did if I um, didn't have the containers. And they're leafing, and they may be easier for me to deal with. They're the same age. I finally got the sandbar willows into their own one gallon containers. So there wasn't much of a root system. I was scared they're going to get uh, with four of them in some of these one gallon containers. I thought they would get a low root mound and I would have to fight. But when I took the first one out, they hardly had any roots to them. Uh, some had long, like a one or two long ones, and some didn't even have that. Some just just little um, roots out from them. So I went ahead and used the one gallon. Uh, still sh running short on horse manure, so I couldn't do that, do it like I want. Here's the service berries. So instead of planting a bunch of blueberries, uh, I'm going to use these like blueberries. Some more. So look at look at some of this. The willow. It's about three feet there. These are the pawpaws. That big one. Again, it's it's not just with the one type of tree that I was getting the biggest, you know, putting them aside. I, I did that with all of them, and it seems to be going in reverse. And again, I'm going to use the ones that have multiples in the buckets. So, and here we've gotten to the persimmons. And they're they're turning out lovely. And I'm trying to educate myself on grafting because I'm I hope to graft the Japanese seedless um, persimmons to these that are much bigger. And if you saw my winter videos of the stuff I harvested from my mom's trees, and I still got a freezer full of um, dehydrated, semi-dehydrated. Um, Japanese persimmons. They're really good. Goji's. 
I bought the two ones thinking I, that one was dead or um, wrong. It looks like the two I bought because <laughs> those were all leaf, you know, showing some signs of life within a week, and it's been close to two weeks now. So uh, my wild um, plums. So definitely those are going to be planted in the woods. I'm also going to put one near my um, the plum tree I bought last year. So put one into the orchard and see how that goes. The witch hazel. Isn't that neat? Aren't they just pretty? Uh, this is a much prettier and more useful plant than... Azaleas, I don't know what it is. I mean, azaleas are gorgeous when they're blooming. And they bloom for such a short time. And then, oh my gosh, when the blooms, if you don't take the blooms off and you leave it on the bushes, it just looks very pretty. Uh, looks like poop. <laughs> because it turns brown and it's hanging there and it covers all the greenery underneath it. And the bushes look awful. And it's really sad to see that. So... And I got a friend that I'm going to uh, swap a couple of these for some turmeric that she's got growing. So this is one I'm going to keep and I'm going to um, plant over there. My husband wants, uh, I was going to dig that in, but he told me to wait because he wants to retrench. Because when the water comes down our driveway, it comes this way toward the house and our cars. And he wants to get that worked where it will all come down and the water will go along where I've got the trees and stuff planted. So, but these are pretty. I mean, I think they're, they're just pretty plants. I'm keeping an eye out for the witch's hat aphids. And obviously there was an infestation with the ones I brought here. But doing what I did last year, if you watch my um, videos from last year, where I was pinching them off, e either the entire leaf um, or wherever the um, hat was showing up, I would actually, there, there would be holes in the leaf, and which is fine. See, bugs will eat, and the leaves will do fine. So pinching them off, then the leaves survived, and the uh, videos show that. And I put the, put it into some soapy water, put those, um, which has had aphids into there. They're kind of scary. Doing research on those aphids and their life cycle and what they do and and how many is in that little is you know no, no bigger than my nail tip of my nail there and how many hundreds <laughs> are in that uh, colony and what they can do to other plants especially river birches so um, they're actually destroying entire witch hazel plants to keep the infestation because of the life cycle that they do to, to uh, try to save the river birches from these because uh, even though the witches had aphids do don't hurt witch hazels. I mean, it doesn't really hurt them to have those on there. The life cycle of that uh, insect is very scary. So do look up on that. Now, this is a pretty tree. Uh, this is the Kentucky coffee tree. Again, this got got some bad stuff, some things written up on it. And you got you, you got to be aware of that. Um, and, but I think it's pretty. I think it's going to work somewhat as a nitrogen fixer but I'm not really I'm not really concerned about that here since um, this isn't um, corrupted land beyond where it's been terraced here uh, the woods is uh, natural it's been what it's been for I don't know how many uh, decades or centuries but this is just neat just look at that look how it's grown it's uh, it did a sprout from the tips. The green, what's green is all new. And I'm looking forward to experimenting and sharing about that in the future. So, that's the update on the trees.